Another part of the organization's security controls is login. Controlling how login works for our organization is probably one of the most important parts of this section. So let's get into it. SSO, also known as single sign-on, is a way that we can give our users the ability to log into Salesforce using a login from another application, such as Gmail. This is really useful because it means that users only have to remember one set of login credentials, but they can use it to access multiple different work applications, such as Salesforce and Gmail. The important thing to notice here is that if you set up single sign-on, it means that your login into Salesforce is handled by someone else. It's not handled by you. You are not Gmail or you are not Facebook or you are not whatever it is that you're using to log in. You are Salesforce and you're giving this login access now to a third party to handle. This means that if a user forgets their password, you are not going to be able to help them to log into Salesforce. That's something that's handled by that login provider, whether it's Gmail or some other third party. There are two places in Salesforce that we can look to see the login history of a user. One is the login history page. And the second is the user record. We can see the login history in a related list on the user record or a summarized version in the user details section of the user record. The important thing to note here is that a login is only recorded, incorrect or correct, if the user enters their correct username. If a user enters the incorrect username, then you're not going to be able to know if they've had a failed or successful attempt at logging in because there's nothing that we can use to record that against. This means that if a user comes to you and they say, look, I've had real trouble, Amber, logging in, can you please help me? And I go into the user page and I see that it doesn't look like they've tried to log in today. I know that it's probably because they're getting the username wrong. If I can see their login attempts and they all say unsuccessful, it means that they've got their username right, but their password wrong. This helps a lot when I'm trying to help them get into the org. In Salesforce, you can set up two-factor authentication. This means that a user can get a code which is sent to them via mobile or even using the Salesforce Authenticator app. This is a much more secure way of users logging into Salesforce as you're making sure that it really is that user who is logging in. However, this can present some difficulties. What if your user has left their phone at home? Does that mean they can't log into Salesforce for the whole workday? No. As a Salesforce admin, you can generate a temporary verification code and send that to the user. You can also avoid using two-factor authentication if a user's IP is listed under the trusted IP range. The trusted IP range is a range of IPs that do not require two-factor authentication. They are trusted, so we don't require them to use two-factor authentication to log in. Under the security section in Setup, you can set the password policies. As a Salesforce admin, you can set things like the password expiry date, how often do passwords expire, the password length. You can enforce password history to make sure that users aren't just reusing the same password over and over again. And you can set the lockout time for people who have gotten their password wrong a certain number of times. You can even set that lockout time to be forever. Part of the user login experience is where a user logs in from. Now we have the default Salesforce login page, but we can customize the URL of our Salesforce org and our Salesforce login page by using my domain. Now I'm not talking about my domain as in Amber's domain. I'm talking about a feature in Salesforce called my domain. My domain lets you specify a customer specific name for your Salesforce org. This means that users can log in from a URL that has the company domain in it. They should also be able to log in from the Salesforce default login page unless you have specified as a Salesforce admin otherwise. 
After a new domain has been deployed, it cannot be reversed. Once you have deployed a new domain, all of your Visual Force Pages URLs will change. We can set a time for each user to be automatically logged out. This is called a session timeout. Let's take a look at an example. We could set the session timeout value to one hour, which would mean that all of our users after logging in would be automatically logged out of Salesforce one hour later, and then they'd have to log in again. If you're halfway through working something in Salesforce at 4.59 and the session timeout is at 5 p.m., will you be automatically kicked out of Salesforce once the clock ticks over to 5 p.m.? No. But you will be kicked out if you try to reload your page, save a record, or start something new. Anything that really requires loading in Salesforce is automatically going to pick up on that session timeout and you will be kicked out of Salesforce. In our session settings, we can also specify the expiry time for any sort of account verification link. Let's say that you set up a new user and you send them an email with a verification link to verify their email address and they don't click it and the session timeout is for 24 hours, then they'll have to be sent a new link. But you can control how long that link is activated for. 